On November 25th, 1987, which, geez Louise, is 35 years ago today, Spalding Gray was on the talk show Sonia Live promoting his HBO on location special, Terror of Pleasure, which is about buying a messed up house up in Connecticut and what he had to do to get out of it. Gray was incredible. One of my favorite, let's just call him humorists, he focused mostly on, on monologues, but he also wrote this incredible book, Impossible Vacation. Spalding Gray's Impossible Vacation. It's about life and death. And as we all know, Spalding decided to proceed down the death path when he took his own life several years ago. But thankfully, he left us a body of work that we can read or listen to. That's great. Check out Spalding Gray. Funny, 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 sad man. Spring, Spalding Gray was one of my first guests on Sonia Live when his Swimming to Cambodia opened in movie theaters across the country. Now, the master storyteller has a new special about to debut, an HBO on-location presentation called The Terrors of Pleasure. The hour-long monologue tells the story of his real-life search in Crumville, New York, for the perfect country hideaway. But for Spalding, there was no joy to be had in Crumville. An Allen motif. No. He opens the door, we go in, and I don't know what to say. I mean, I don't know. What, what do I say about the house? I don't know what to tell. Uh, why is that floor slanting, for instance, there? He goes, that's not slanting. <laughs> and I believed him. <laughs> I didn't want it to be slanting. And I said, um, well, uh, what with the fireplace, for instance? That looks like it's sinking. It really looks like it's sinking. He goes, no, that's settled. <laughs> We had a major settlement here in 58. We had a big flood come down off the mountain. The house shifted, it settled. It's not going anywhere. I put a drainage ditch out back. Then he wants to show me all the good points of the house. First of all, the heating system. He has a furnace in the attic. <laughs> Terrors of Pleasure debuts this Saturday night on HBO. Welcome again. And would you please tell us the story of this house? How did you get involved in this in the first place? I. Uh... I, I must, it must have been one of my self-destructive moves, you know. I, I wanted to buy a cabin and I, and I wanted to buy it for cash, you know. I didn't want to get involved in any mortgage. And once I paid cash for this thing, and, and also, by the way, all along the way, I was told by different people that the thing should be bought, insured for fire, and then burned down. That's what one contractor told me. The more they would tell me about the horrors of this thing, the more my heart went out to it. It was crazy. And, and, and I did it. I, I paid cash for the damn thing and uh, got stuck. And That's in the middle of getting stuck in it, I began to turn it around into something positive. But Spalding, it's, it's as if you identified with the underdog. I mean, all of a sudden, you and I, the house were one. I know. I think that is true. I think it was a certain amount of, uh, of wasp guilt in me, and, and I, <laughs> I, pick, I, 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 you're right. I mean, I, I, I saved him. I saved the guy. You know, I, I bought his horrible house. Now someone else bought it from me. You know. Oh it's, well. It's, well, wait a second. Hold, hold on. Let's talk about that for a minute. I mean, did, is it a better house for having had you there? Yes. Yes. In other words, at the end of the monologue, I, I say to the audience, not, not on the HBO, but when I do it live, I say, I don't see myself as Christ, but I do see myself something like a lobster, you know, eating all that garbage and turning into sweet white meat. Uh, g being at that house, somehow I, I turned it around to a positive thing. Not that I fixed it up, but I told a story about it. Then we, t we shot the HBO special up there and used all the people, all the local people in it are real people that told me the house was no good. They came back and played themselves. And to boot, we had to pay a location fee to the new owner. So, now, D now, Spalding, could you just help me understand why you have such distrust of humanity that all of these people came forward? It must have been very courageous for them to look at a stranger and say, don't buy that house. But, oh, no, you were going to persevere. Um... Look, it was some sort of perverse, stubborn streak there. I will never do it again. Uh, since then, I bought a house that is, is, that is almost perfect. I mean, I learned my lesson. But uh, th there was something perverse. I mean, I, I say in the monologue, too, I, I say, um, you know, happy people don't make history.
And then uh -huh. I say, you know, did I buy this house just to make a monologue about it? There was one point there where I didn't know. You know, I thought, had I had a part of me set this up and stepped into it so that the other creative part would have to learn how to get out of it in a creative way? And I began to think that I was a little schizoid. That's when I started keeping notes. As a Spaldi, I, if I may, could you tell me the sales pitch that you gave to the new owner? Oh, God. I went through a real estate agent. I didn't do a sales pitch. In fact, someone was about to buy the house, and I allowed a local magazine uh, up in the Catskills to write a story about the house. They read the story and canceled it. They just dropped out completely. So I, I was about ready to give up on it. In fact, I was thinking of burning it down for the HBO special and have David Byrne play Burning Down the House, and, and we'd have a helicopter shot over of the house in flames. And, and, and along came this guy, <laughs> and uh, he has all sorts of ideas about putting a hot tub in. He knew the problems of it. Uh, but by the way, the furnace in the attic is broken down, and I am now paying for that because I had to put 1500 in escarole, or escarole, uh -huh. as I was calling it. <laughs> but it wasn't a pitch. It wasn't a pitch. The real estate agent did it. She didn't even call it a handyman special. It was a miracle that someone bought it. Now, when you do your monologues, I mean, I have watched you, and, and I, I am frankly a little awestruck. I don't see you have any notes. You don't seem to write anything down. I was looking for a guy who did prompting, none of the above. How do you do it? Uh, outline and I you know I really think that I have a kind of photographic I see the film of the story and I'm describing what I'm seeing so that makes it fresh you know when I'm talking I'm seeing the experience and describing it and also just to make sure that I don't you know wander or go off I have a few key words right in front of me just like a musician who knows the score very well will still have his music or her music to know the rests and pauses and the beats and the rhythms uh, but basically I'm talking about memory I'm talking from my memory it's so interesting, and, and I noticed that you're doing something at the Mark Tape out here in L.A. You're going to take interesting people, cold, right. and put them on a stage. What, what is it right, that right, you're right. doing this time? It, it's, um, it's called L.A. The Other, and it's taking about 50 people from Los Angeles, all many different walks of life, some uh, uh, policemen, firemen, uh, um, uh, people from the Skid Row, and interviewing them on stage, just talking. Uh, the way that we're talking now about their lives, why they live in L.A. and what L.A. is like. It's, it's really a project to get in touch with the other side of L.A., the, the, the part that isn't cliched, the part that isn't got to do with the film industry. That's for two weeks, the first two weeks of, of January at the Taper 2. And then for the second two weeks of January, I'll do a new monologue or begin a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And you and Renee are working on a project together, too. What is that? We're writing a uh, film script for Columbia Pictures um, about uh, Americans in Nicaragua, and we were down there uh, researching it in, in August. So mm -hmm. we've just got the first draft done of that, and we have to have that finished March 1st, so that's another big project we're on. Yeah, I should identify that Renee is your lady in waiting, in waiting, <laughs> in waiting, <laughs> in waiting for eight years. And okay. I say this with a lot of love. I mean, do you ever expect to make Renee an honest woman, Spalding? Um, sure. Why not? Oh. Oh, good, uh, but I, good. I, I, Is this an I, announcement? <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, um, I'm allergic uh, to, yes, to marriage. Yes, I, uh, there I, is, I, actually, there is, a, there is an al al uh, not, no, it's a phobia for marriage. I can't think of the name of the word. M m m m marriage you, is, you, is You always get me on that one. <laughs> well, I always think that I'll just kind of throw it in and see if things have changed. Loved having you with us. Next time, yeah. let's try to do it when you're in L.A. Great. I'll Enjoyed it. Love it. Thanks. When we return, the top news headlines of the hour. And I can hear the streams bubbling and, 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 and the brooks flowing and the, the bears thrashing and the, and, 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 and the, and the psychopaths uh, 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 coming. Thanks for watching, Cleveland Live Music. It's awfully bright out here. I'd click on another one of my videos. Quit looking into the sun. Your mother told you not to do that. Please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel more, there's GoFundMe and Patreon information in the video descriptions. Ooh. Ooh!